Vernon Felton. I'm a senior editor at Bike Magazine. We're at the Kingdom Trails in Eastburg, Vermont. And today we're checking out Da Vinci's Troy Carbon RR. It's a top of the line version of their uh, sort of revised Troy bikes, which are you know, all mountain bikes. They have a whole bunch of them. In fact, they go all the way from 2,600 bucks for the base level model to their full pimped out $6,600 version. If you don't want to get a full bike, they sell the frame, carbon frame, completely carbon, for 2,100 bucks, which is actually a pretty smoking deal for a carbon frame these days. What do you guys think of this? I had a lot of fun on it. This is one of the bikes that we, that we were spending most of the time at the, at the bike park with, um, pedaling up a couple of the down only trails, so we got a little bit of everything, but uh, it, was, it was one of the, um, it was one of the bikes that was, it was the most conducive to um, putting a lot of input into the bike. Like people who really like to pick the front end up, like to break the rear end loose, like to jump. It it really was was ready for the jumps. It was ready for popping off the of roots and kind of landing sideways into the ruts and everything. I, I it was it was really ready to rumble for me. Yeah, I would second that sentiment. It was. Definitely a bike that you could um, feel comfortable with it breaking loose, feel comfortable with it sideways, and know that it was going to ride itself, and or you were going to be able to get it back on track. You know, and I, I struggled with this bike. Yeah, I I loved its stability. I thought that it it really was implacable. It, it felt incredibly solid and composed at all times. But I. I had a harder time getting it to, I, I had a harder time gathering speed to jump things. I was, I was coming up short on stuff okay. and I found myself dropping into holes and the bike didn't throw it offline at all, but it just sort of felt like I was just like. Why do you think that was? Like, like maybe uh, getting it up, like carrying it up. I don't think I was being enough of a brute with it. Um, I think mm. this is a bike that requires a heavy hand for lack of any mm. better term. Well, so. um, and I am not the most confident rider in super gnarly terrain. I love riding trail as fast as my abilities will allow me to, but when, especially when you get into park type terrain and you've got faces that you actually have to kind of gather speed and come into, um, I was, I, I could never quite feel where I needed to be on the bike and I'm pretty sure that was me. Uh, it was just, the bike was totally fine most ways, but I just, I, this one, for me today was, I had trouble getting it up there and I felt like, I felt like the suspension was heavy and it's damping or needed, needed people just to be hitting things harder. Mm. And that was, I was running like 40% sag at one point, still wasn't getting full travel on it. I've, this bike eunuched me. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a bike that needs to be really yes. charged on. 100%. And I wasn't criticizing it, I'm saying I struggled with it. Not through any negative trait of the bikes. Just that right. you weren't manned up on it. This bike likes to be manned up on, yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, it need, it, that's where it shines. And it, it really is otherwise, like a solid frame. Like it, oh, the stiffness is mm -hmm. yeah. incredible. I mean, like that corner, like really charging through corners, you, the thing doesn't budge no, at all. And then when you, it's, you can feel that rear wheel kind of sliding out and then it'll catch. Yeah. And it doesn't, like there's no torsion yeah. at all. It just goes catch and just pops you out. It's really pretty fun. What did you guys think about the component spec? Uh, <clears throat> I thought it was pretty cool that it had the um, travel adjust pike. Yes. Because it uh, feels like it needs it on the climb climbs a bit. Like on the steeper climbs, um, it'll wander a little bit, you know, and it's nice to be able to just like drop the fork and have it just run up the climbs better. Because, I mean, the bike is an efficient pedaler, really is, you can leave it open and yeah. it's pretty good. And then when you put it on trail, it's even better. That travel adjust, it, I mean, it makes it into on flat ground or God forbid downhill, a, a terribly uncomfortable bike in a way. I mean, but when you're climbing, it just dials the power into your legs, dials the comfort in your crotch. I mean, and <laughs> This is the first time crotch has been, yeah. Crotch comfort. Yeah. So it, Check. it, it So it was, a, it was a, let's get away from your crotch. It yeah, was a sorry. plus. Yeah, it was a plus yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, was it, was that because of the boost though? The boost in my crotch? <laughs> <laughs> 
anything else on the component spec that you guys thought was either hit or miss. It has the BZA, Biza. Biza. Yeah, bar and stem, which are, well. Beautiful. They are beautiful. Just are. beautiful. Not awesome. Related to Riza. No, no, okay. there is a copyright <laughs> thing with the whole Wu Tang deal. Yeah. Okay. No, it, you know, but it's interesting. I mean, the bike is really spec with attention to detail. And I guess that's the bottom line. Yeah. I mean, this is a done. high end bike, and I guess you could say it should be, but not all high end bikes have that level of specificity on the bike. But this, someone did it right. Yeah, they did a good job. For sure. Hey, if you want to know more about this bike, go to our Bible bike test issues. And if you want to see more bike test videos, go to bikemag.com.